This is Steve Zeltzer with WorkWeek. The recent crisis in Jackson, Mississippi with water actually has a long history. We recently talked with Robert Schaffer, the president of the Mississippi AFL-CIO, about this history. Uh, Robert Schaffer with the Mississippi AFL-CIO. Welcome to WorkWeek. Maybe you can talk about this uh, struggle in Jackson, Mississippi to, to have fresh water. It's a national uh, focus now. Why working people, uh, the people of Jackson, Mississippi, aren't getting fresh water. You're saying... And you said that there's a long struggle to get a properly functioning water system. Why don't you talk about what led up to this and why it's happening? Well, some of this is just my theory or my opinion, you know, going on for years. Two years ago when we had the bad winter, we had main water lines that bursted. And uh, this, uh, they're 100 years old, you know what I mean? And it's... it's the system has not been kept up. And I know there's a lot of federal money... Over the years, it's come in, but you really don't never know what happened to it. I'm similar to the TANF uh, thing we got going on. Well, a lot of the stuff that the state controls, like state offices and stuff, have been taken out of Hines County and uh, put in the out, outer line counties, like uh, maybe Rankin in Madison County. And what we're seeing is a lot of the businesses are leaving because they having to raise a tax base to try to struggle to keep the city going and and which in turn makes the businesses say hey i'm not staying i'm i'm going somewhere else a lot of them have i'm not sure how much the population has failed in the last 10 years but I I believe it used to be around 185,000, and and I heard yesterday it was around 160,000. And I don't know that to be factual, but I know that that people are are leaving in droves. And one of the reasons is the water. When you can't drink the water, it comes out of the faucet. When it gets to the point where you can't take a bath in it, where the, the officials is telling you. You know, boil your water before you use it. It's, it's gone, got pretty bad. And uh, this has been ongoing for, I don't know, the last bottle of water notice has been on for several weeks. Now, they do have, as I understand it, the pressure up. It was so bad a week or so ago that buildings with a, like a second or third floor didn't have enough water pressure to flush your commodes. In fact, the state capital has got porta potties around it. If that tells you something. And this is the state capital of Jackson, Mississippi. You have yes. a governor there, and millions of dollars have been going to Mississippi uh, from the federal government. Uh, the federal government uh, has been contacted, uh, the EPA. Uh, where's the money gone that, that has gone to Mississippi to uh, help the people of Jackson get running water, uh, f- uh, clean running water? Lord, I don't know. You know, and that's. I think that's a question that the feds need to help answer. You know, since the feds sent the money in, I think they're obligated to find out what happened to it because it's definitely not on the ground for the residents of Jackson, Mississippi. Do you think that has something to do with the fact that a large part of the population are black? Well, I mean... um, You know, black or Democrat, I mean, you know, historically... You know, the Democrats and Republicans is, has been split real bad since uh, Haley Barber became governor. And he brought in a system to get uh, the Democrats, a lot of them switched over to the Republican Party when Haley Barber came to town. You know, and uh, since they got a super majority in the legislature, uh, if you got a Democratic issue, you can just live with it because it's not going to get passed. And I understand a lot of the money that is going into Mississippi from the federal government has to go through the state government. Uh, what has happened from some, with some of that money that's coming in from the federal government when it gets to uh, Mississippi? Well, I, you know, uh, the, the part I know about is what I've read in the paper. Uh, and, uh, you know, the TANF money and all, you know. and uh, What was that about? Uh, they just basically put it where they want it and uh they just the uh the the guy that's kind of checks that uh what's uh, i can't think of the office's name but it's the state auditor 
I brought up some issues on it and had a law firm working on it. And he were, was about to start serving subpoenas on, on on people, and they fired him. The the governor, as I understand it, fired the lawyer. And uh, so they now they're getting another law firm, and I would assume to not ask so many questions. But I think in the meantime that the feds are getting involved, so maybe we'll get the questions answered. So you're saying that, I mean, what happened in this incident is federal money was supposed to go to poor people in Mississippi, and instead it ended up in uh, going to rich people and going to their their private projects is, or right. their own projects. As I understand it, they built a, quite a bit of money, maybe somewhere around a million dollars, went to the, you know, uh, Southern Mississippi University to build some kind of facility down there. Now, this is stuff I'm reading in the paper. I don't have access to the records, you know, and all, you know, but, and then I understand that Brent Farr got a bunch of money to give speeches that he didn't make, but I also understand he paid it back, but now they're fussing over the interest on it. Well, what does it say about the way the state's being run, that money which is supposed to be going to poor people ends up going to rich people in Mississippi? It's the plantation mentality. I mean, hell, it's been going on for a hundred years. I mean, you know, it's just they, <clears throat> there was a time, you know, when we had a, a decent deal going on. You know, I mean, we, you know, I, I'm with the labor union. We could go over there and, and discuss our issues and sometimes get a little bit of something done for workers. But now it's better if I, they don't even see my face over there because they're not going to do anything to help labor. It's our working people, which is the same. And, and the union, Mississippi and Texas, some of these states, out the fact that they're, you know, that they don't have unions. It's open shop and it's freedom. Um, what you have a different idea of what's going on there? Well, I mean, it, it's just you know they call it right to work. Hell, everybody's got the right to work. It makes it very difficult to join a union in Mississippi because they put so much money and and it, the chambers and all of those people will help the companies fight the unions off. Let me give you an example of a state law here in Mississippi, and you can look it up. It's Kelly versus Mississippi Valley Gas, where they can discharge you for filing a workers' comp claim. Now, that's state law. So if you file a workers' comp claim, you can be fired for that? Under the state law. I'm not saying that there are very many people do that, but that went to the Supreme Court of Mississippi, and that was a ruling years ago. And what was the basis of firing somebody for filing a workers' comp complaint? Hell, I mean, uh, it keeps their workers' comp insurance down. If you don't file a claim, I mean, hell, pretty simple. You don't have very much of a workers' comp insurance. Same as Texas. Texas has got a law where you can waive having workers' comp insurance. Because my son was working in Texas on a construction job, and he called me and said, Dad, they're telling me if I don't sign this, this sheet waving workers' comp, they're going to fire me. So it's little laws like that that they got on the books all over the South that really destroy the workers. And stuff like that helps keep the unions out. And if you get injured and, and you don't have workers' comp, what happens? I guess you go to the emergency room and... Let the hospitals eat it. So it's a matter of cost shifting. The employer doesn't have to pay uh, a public hospital or the public have to pay. Right, yeah. And and, and that, uh, or if they got health insurance, I would say they would put it on their health insurance. But you can't get any work, you know, trying to do anything. I mean, you just get knocked down. I mean, you know, the uh, we, we have got a good attorney for the state federation here that's won a lot of bad faith lawsuits. But, I mean, he's just one out of the whole state, you know, that'll really sure enough challenge him. And some of the others will, too. I'm not talking about I personally know this guy and all, you know, and he's won a lot of cases, you know. But what they do is they really put you off and starve you out. If you file a workers' comp claim, they figure out, find a reason not to pay it, you know, your weekly benefit. And after a while, I mean, how long can you go without having a paycheck coming in if you're the sole provider? You know, we've seen a lot of that. They're they're having to pay people more to get them to work. So you're saying that trying to organize a union in Mississippi is a very difficult process because the state is controlled by anti-labor people, and, and you're saying when you try to negotiate with them... You, they don't even want to talk. That's uh, They have contempt for unions. Right. You know, they just, uh, some of them call us the alphabet, you know, when we could show up. What percentage of workers are organized? In a state, I would say 5 6%, maybe 6%. Could be right around that. There's a chart on the Internet I look at a lot, you know. We're 
num- we're 34th in the nation, or were the last time I looked, you know. A lot of them, you know, is lower than we are, North Carolina and South Carolina, as a, as a percentage of the workers. And are the public workers in... Uh, Jackson organized? They have a state law that school teachers and and public sector people can't have a labor collective bargaining agreement. So there's actually a state law preventing the public workers, the teachers, from having a union? Right. How do they justify that? Because they do what they want to. I thought that was, I thought it was legal in the United States. Well, I thought it was too when I first came down here, but there is a a state, you you know, there's a state workers union, May CWA. They probably got 800 to 1,000 members out of 33,000. And kind of off the record, we call it collective begging. I think they've been th- like that went 13 years without a raise. Uh, the teachers are not allowed to have payroll deduction for union dues. That's a state law. Now, the state workers, they let them pay into, I guess, what you'd call an association. We call it a union, but they let some of them do it, just depending on the situation. It doesn't like uh, sound like freedom, uh, 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 the right to association for union people. They talk about freedom in Mississippi yep. and these other states. That doesn't sound like freedom to me. Oh, I know. I mean, just the, the fact that it's against the law to have a collective bargaining agreement is, is basically it violates federal law. Has anyone challenged that? No, not that I know of. Not since I've been down here we had enough. We don't even have a Department of Labor in Mississippi. There's no Department of Labor in, in Mississippi? Nope. I got uh, almost got it passed one year. In fact, under Ray Mabus. He put one in by executive order, and when uh, Kurt Fordyce got elected, he abolished it. Yet they get all kind of money coming in from the Department of Labor, and they do with it what they want to do with it. So they're getting money from the Department of Labor, but it's not really going to, from what you can see, going to labor and, and advancing working people in Mississippi. Right, and they also don't have an state OSHA. But the last time I checked, they get a high 500000 a year that goes to safety. So where's the money going? It's a good question. When I was manager of a credit union, I called and tried to get them to put on some kind of seminar and all, you know, and and they didn't know what I was talking about. Couldn't even get a conversation going. So if all this federal money is going into Mississippi and apparently it's not being used properly, where's the federal government been? Well, that's... That, that's the point. I, I think they just kind of write us off and they say, hell, we'll just give them some money to keep your mouth shut, you know, and let it go. And is you think that's the reason this thing with the water has gone on as long as it has? Because the EPA has known about it. Previous federal government agencies have known about it. It's been going on there for years. Right. And I think they just ignore it. I mean, you know, I mean, they got bigger fish to fry, I guess. But I mean, I hope all this stuff coming out that, that we'll get some attention down here and at least find out who's stealing the money. And the United States is spending a lot of money, billions for the Ukraine, billions around the world. What do you think about the fact that we can't even have safe drinking water in the United States at this point? It don't excite me because I've been living through it so many years. You know what I mean? I guess it's just become a standard. But there's plenty Places. We had a, a several years ago when Obama, Obama run the first time, we had a lot of people come in from the national office, AFLCO office, and we sent them up in the Delta, you know, you know, knocking on doors. I mean, you know, really, I mean, and one guy come back and he told me, he said, man, I've been to Cambodia and hell, it's in better shape in this damn state in certain places. But then you got your nice places, you know. I mean, you know, you know, you got your places they take you to or, sh- or or show you, but they don't take you to the places where the real deal is. That's like Jackson. I can take you to some places, and I've got a guy yesterday hit me up to help me unload some water. Uh, we giving out water. Guy that's I guess pretty much homeless. I went and get, I pay him cash money to hit me, you know, and where he'll have something. and you, 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 I could take you and show you this, and you just wouldn't believe You just would not believe it. So the conditions are pretty bad. Do you think the labor movement, the national labor movement, should start to focus on the South? Because it, it seems like it's, it's dragging down the rest of the labor movement if conditions are as bad as you say they are. Yeah. And uh, I'd invite anybody to come in and see for themselves. That's the only way you can really get a feel for what's going on. And, uh... I'll be happy to take anybody around and show them, you know, that want to come. Right now, you know, with all the water, you know, we got, I don't know, ain't no telling how many different organizations in here trying to help with the water. But see, after this problem gets fixed, it'll be forgotten. It'll be something else. But the fact is, the infrastructure is just gone. I mean, you know, and if we have a bad winter, you're going to see the same thing happen. No matter what kind of water plants they put in, if they do, 
it's still got to get to the house to the faucets. And what what one of our problems is, especially in cold weather, these damn water mains just bust. I'm talking about 20 and 30 inch lines. So you're saying it's probably going to get better because the infrastructure is still decrepit and and falling apart. Right. I mean, I I, I, I don't unless they come up with a plan to fix the delivery of the water once it comes out of the plant. I think we still got problems. And the, a similar problem in a different way happened in Flint, Michigan. They were privatizing the water system and they put bad water, which poisoned people and also destroyed the piping system. It seems there's a kind of a history of this thing going on. Yeah, and and, and I, I think a lot of it is neglect. And, and I'm not blaming the current administration. I'm ta- it's been going on for years. And is the governor taking any responsibility in Mississippi for the collapse of the water system in Jackson? It's, it is the state capital. Yeah, he, not really. I mean, he's kind of covering his butt now since he got on TV, on CNN and all. But the mayor has written him letters asking for help a year or so ago. Some of that's coming out now, you know, and claiming he didn't know, know they had a problem. So he was notified by the mayor of Jackson about this very problem previously. Yeah, in writing, you know, I mean... And the mayor came out yesterday because of the governor acting like he didn't know what was going on. And he said, well, here's a letter that I wrote to the governor, and I never got a response. A yes, no, or a hell no. You know what I mean? Sure. So, so uh, he's doing the, 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 the governor. Oh, yeah, him. exactly. And, uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's, uh, it's unreal. I mean, it's just really unreal. Hell, I mean, it's, it's so common here. People don't get too excited about it because it's just another <laughs> one of them. But this, uh, this taking this money from the welfare people, the TANF money, I think they've kind of went off the deep end doing that. You know what I mean? It's one thing to ignore a water system, but when you got children and say the, the governor, you know, the uh, where you sign up to get Medica- the Medicaid, the, he, he refuses to do that. Several of the southern states have refused to do that. Get the extra help on Medicaid. So we're talking about taking of children, care of children, uh, this resources so they can they can have a, a life. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I just wish some good investigative reporter would come to Jackson and spend a week or two and just I can show them a part of it and I can hook them up with people that can show them the rest of it. I think it's an important story and I, I think that the people of the United States should expect that uh, a, a person here or who lives in the United States should have the right to, to uh, fresh water, should have the right to a decent life, housing, and decent condition. This is a rich country and yeah. what's going on in... in and Jackson is a sign that uh, something is seriously wrong with the system. Uh, Robert Schaffer with the Mississippi AFL-CIO. My office number is 601, of course you got it, 948-0517. My sale number is 601-842-4912. This is Steve Zeltzer, Work Week. We've been talking with Robert Schaffer, who is AFL-CIO, Mississippi President and Secretary Treasurer.